These are a couple of the cuttings that we took off the original plants when we dug. You were with me when we put these in water. Look at that root system they have on there. And yes, we do eat these. I know they're really good. So we'll just see how long it takes those to really root out. Now I like the ends. These are my favorite. And you can cook with these and you can freeze these. But for right now, I just want to get a few of these started. Once these get going a little bit, we'll go ahead and get them in containers. And we'll keep them in the house. We'll be able to make slips off of this all winter long. Now I'm not too worried about some of these leaves dying back. And they're going to mostly die back once we get these potted up. But since it's going to get really cold tonight, we need to get these in containers and get them up to the house. Got one basil left out here for our Christmas presents. These I'm not giving out. This is the start of next year's sweet potatoes. We're going to put soil about halfway up in these little containers. These little six inch pots will allow these plenty of room to grow out. Now these roots have all kind of grown together. So we're just going to kind of tease them apart. Just kind of gently, gently pull them apart as they'll let you. And if you break a root here or there, you'll be all right. They come apart pretty easy actually. There's pretty good roots there. It's much bigger. Then we have this one. And it's, it's started to make roots all the way up here at this top upper node. I'm going to keep all of that in here. Just like the basil that will root at each node, each one of these bumps, those will make roots. So if you plant it a little deep, don't worry about it. You know, some plants you have to really be careful where the crown was. Basil and sweet potatoes are not those kind of plants. You just backfill with soil. And since those roots are good and healthy, it's not going to take this plant very long. And it's going to start re-leafing out. Let's go ahead and give that a drink. Now this one doesn't have any leaves at all on it. I'm pretty confident we're going to be just fine. Got some good roots started down in there. Get some good soil, a little water. You can do this too. Then we got this big one. And like I said, each one of these little spots right here, roots will come from there, will come from there. As these grow, we'll go ahead and continue to clip and root and repot. So these three ought to make us a pretty nice little batch of sweet potato slips. Probably got just a little too much soil in this one. Just put those roots down in there and then backfill. If you weren't able to start with some cuttings and get those rooted, the best way to make slips is you take a potato that you've taken from the garden or one that you've bought from the store. You got a couple methods. You can put toothpicks halfway up, submerge them in a glass of water, and they should start making slips and start rooting. Or you can lay that potato in a pan half filled with water and they'll do the same thing. Or you can lay them in a pan filled with soil, just set it kind of in the soil, make sure it stays moist, and it should do the same thing. The way I do it is I just leave it on the kitchen counter, and sometime around Christmas, New Year's, they start going ahead and making slips. As those slips come off, I peel them off and put them in water, and then we start this process all over again. You go from water to roots into containers, and then around Memorial Day in northeastern Oklahoma, it's a really good time for me to put our sweet potato slips in the ground. And then come right before frost, we see what we get. You can do this too. And it's really that easy. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean up this leaf. It's looking a little yellow. I'm going to leave this leaf on. That's dried up a little bit. Got a little dead wood there. But we should be just fine. Like I say, it's going to get cold tonight. So I'm going to take these three and this basil up to the house. Then we got a few things to cover in the garden. You want to come along for that? Now our Swiss chard would probably be okay if we didn't do anything. But I feel much better having a little protection on it. But if you see the sides of this cold frame are a little too short. So I've got a remedy for that. 
So what I did is get a couple more of these bags of shavings. They're kind of acting like Lego blocks. We just stack them up. And that gives us a nice little base to put this frame on. As long as you can get your plastic around the side so you can get it covered up, you're good to go. Get it all tucked in. Put something heavy around the edges. This will just act as a little A-frame over here. And since we're not trying to save any kind of squash, I can just cover our lettuce with this tub. With our little tent. Remember, having some little buckets of water always helps hold this down. We're sealed up. Okay, our carrots, our beets, our turnips, our spinach, our radishes. I think we're tucked in for the night. You can do this too. Now if you want to learn about what you can plant in December, click that link right there and I'll meet you right back in the garden. If you'd like to learn a little bit about the deep mulch, click that link and I'll meet you back in the garden. And until next time, remember, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and God bless you. Come on, let's plant. Let's go plant garden.